since getting married, they've acquired a mansion in Napa Valley, a vineyard home worth up to $25 million, real luxury. It's on 16 acres. Pelosi has a gorgeous waterfront condo in the exclusive K Street region in D.C., now worth over two mil. She has a multi-million dollar red brick mansion in California's Pacific Heights. And Paul owns at least two commercial properties in San Francisco, combined worth up to $50 million. Since regaining the gavel in 2018, the Pelosi's wealth has skyrocketed. That year, her financial disclosure report revealed a net worth of over $114 million. Then, in 2019, Pelosi's assets totaled up to a whopping $271 million. And in 2020, those numbers went up even more, to as high as $315 million. Bucks. Quite a lot of crumbs. So where's the money coming from? 60 Minutes basically accused Paul Pelosi of insider trading. Madam Leader, um, I wanted to ask you why you and your husband, back in March of 2008, um, accepted and participated in a very large IPO deal from Visa. At a time, there was major... Uh, legislation affecting their credit card companies making its way through the um, through the house and well, did you consider that to be a conflict of interest the, yeah, I, I don't know what your point is of your question is there some point that you want to make with that well I, I, I guess what I'm asking is do you think it's all right for uh, a speaker uh, to accept uh, a very preferential and favorable uh, stock deal well, we didn't. And you participated in the IPO. Well, I have many And at the time, you were Speaker of the House. You don't that. think it was a conflict of interest or had the appearance no, of a conflict not, of interest? No, it doesn't. It only has the appearance if you decide that you're going to have a, a, a elaborate on a false premise. But it, it, it's not true, and that's that. I don't understand what part's yeah. not true. Yes, sir. Um, that I, that I would you. act upon an investment. In 2007, Visa worried the new Democrat Congress would target their swipe fees, costing them billions. So they hired a team of lobbyists who descended on Pelosi. Visa's CEO personally met with her. She got donations from him. One of Nancy's advisors left and became a Visa lobbyist himself. The old inside-outside game. Now get this. Suddenly, Paul Pelosi got a phone call from his broker. He was in luck. Paul was offered a pre-screened invite to get in early on Visa's $18 billion IPO. Did Nancy and her husband hesitate? No. They bought between $1 million and $5 million worth of Visa stock. But it gets better. While Pelosi was Speaker, bills that would have hurt Visa's stock price were blocked in the House. Visa shares going up over 200% during the time, making the Pelosi's a fortune on paper. Nancy Pelosi and her husband have a knack for taking advantage of market timing. In March, Paul Pelosi exercised $2 million worth of Microsoft options just two weeks before the tech giant got a $22 billion contract to equip the U.S. Army with high-tech headsets. In January, the Pelosi's got a $1 million worth of Tesla stock right before Joe Biden announced electric car incentives. In June, the Pelosi family cashed in big time just before Congress was set to pounce on big tech. Mr. Pelosi exercised options on Google's parent company, Alphabet, making an easy 5.3 mil. Now, to be fair, the Pelosi's have never been indicted for insider trading, but her marriage, investments, and access, combined with extremely fortunate timing, have created a lot of suspicion.